तो आनंद जी जैसा और एक अच्छा को होस्ट बनना चाहे ए डबल पी आई ए तो एक दोपहर को नॉर्मली जो बियॉन्ड ऑफ सी एल सी का भी सेशन नहीं करता एक्सेप्ट ड्यूरिंग द कोविड डेज उन्होंने बोला हमारा साथ तो अच्छा ही है बट हमारे साथ से अच्छा अगर साथ को हम सेवन भी मान लें तो अगर हमने हंड्रेड करना है तो तो अगर हम दुर्गेश जी को ले आते हैं दुर्गेश पांडे जी को तो उसमें बहुत ही अच्छी चीज हुई जब इन्होंने मैसेज दिया दुर्गे डॉक्टर सी ए दुर्गेश पांडे तो मैंने बोला भाई ये डॉक्टर भी हैं और सी ए भी हैं तो वैसे ही कॉम्बिनेशन अच्छा है अब इन्होंने बोला हम सेशन ले लेंगे फॉरेंसिक साइंस एंड इन्वेस्टिगेशन स्टैंडर्ड न्यू डायमेंशन एंड इन्वेस्टिगेशन एस एड इट्स अ वेरी वेरी नीच एरिया फॉर दीपल हु फॉलो बियॉन्ड लॉ सी एल सी then they say that if you if you take a cue from good people like mr durgesh and mr manoj anand and all other they followers on the sessions they follow you realize that if you have to carve out a different field you have to take a cue from successful people like what shiv khera says you don't have to do different things but you have to do it differently to be successful therefore when a topic like forensics accounting and investigation standards i being a lawyer understand that it has its own facets own scope of within the profession as well as for the industry and if you have a good speaker who can hammer the points in the right manner you shouldn't miss that bus maybe it is some different time from your normal routine so i said to mr manoj we will plunge into it and we will take the session forward and when we connected with mr durgesh especially on the linkedin i saw his profile it made me more inquisitive that we had been studying as a lawyer forensic in a different way and different manner but to understand in the manner of investigations and sta- standards and dimensions i thought it will be opening a new mind new window in the my perspective at least and i also believe sacrosanctly that it will also open the windows of the followers of beyond law clc and beyond that i will ask mr manoj anand to unmute himself because he is the connecting point to make the line straight i durgesh and manoj to be connected for a session which will be in lightning as usual just like we see the lightning background of mr manoj and mr durgesh over to manoj thank you ji thank you very much thank you prakash ji uh let me come straight to the topic you know basically the introduction of new criminal law which prompted us to go for this forensic is a paradigm shift for the new india as much much awaited since the last uh, you know earlier laws were at creek and uh, needed a complete overhaul further the draft bills have uh, also accounted for technological advancements which are commendable our union home minister mr amit shah as you know in the first week of august precisely on 11th of uh, august 2023 uh, introduced c bills to repeal and uh, replace repeal been replaced uh, indian penal code the uh, code of criminal procedure and the indian evidence act you know the, the the beauty of this particular bill is that as per the bill the investigations required to be completed within 180 days and courts are required to be passed uh, verdict within 30 days these uh, uh, bills are going to be repealed by the following two uh, bills these are the bharatiya nyay sanhita 2023 which is nothing but i consolidated and amended the provisions relating to offenses at the matters connected with hair with and incidental day to the second one is bharatiya saksha uh, bill 2023 uh, to coordinate and to provide for general rules and principles for evidence of for fair trial you know we people me and uh, uh, dr durgesh uh, are ch- uh, predominantly chartered accountant doing the same practice but still we thought to uh, uh, delve into the domain of uh, advocates reason for that is uh, that uh, these two bills uh, you know the, the, the these uh, the bills hasn't part, become the act but it, it has been referred to the standing committee by the home uh, uh, minister and i think it will sh- see the light of the day only when the new government come into the uh, come into 2024 uh we advocate cs especially ips need to educate and know beforehand in fact uh, uh, for all these uh, things reason for that is that since i am a insolvency professional i am doing lot of ibc 
In IBC, we have inbuilt prison under section 43, 45, 47, 49, 60, and 66, whereby we need to detect or unearth any fraudulent transaction which has been done by the estrogen promoters. Based on those, you know, what's the basis of uh, unearthing those transactions? The basis of unearthing those transactions is forensic audit. And uh, similarly, you know, the, these, uh, you know, the criminal procedure bills which are going to be implemented after some time, uh, these, they are, they're, they're based on forensic. Maybe the uh, criminal sort of forcing, or maybe something else also, because we people deal in financial frauds. When we deal in the financial frauds, there also forcing is quite uh, useful. And our Institute Chartered Accountant of India, I think from 1st of June 2023, they have uh, issued forcing standards, which uh, Dr. Durgesh will be enlightening us. In fact, he is the person who made all these standards on behalf of the Institute of Chartered Accountant of India. Another good part uh, on his part is that I would like to highlight and tell everybody is that, that he is an appointing authority, but most of the investigating agencies of our country, like I think CBI, NIA and uh, all other, or in you know, the investigations as the Kari hai. Or wo jab court ke saamne aai, unko, unko parak ne kliye, because definitely jo defendant tha, usko iska kafi nuksaan hua ja, hoga aane wale time mein. To, those all have been upheld by the court. This is the beauty of his investigation. And without taking much time, I request Dr. C.A. Durgesh Pandey ji to have the button and uh, start teaching us what forensic accounting and how it is adding new dimension in our life, maybe in our uh, financial or non-financial uh, investigation. Over to Durgesh ji. Uh, so first of all, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Manoj ji. Thank you, Vikas sir, for inviting me over, having me here. We will definitely be discussing, uh, you know, the, the forensic accounting and investigation standards, the genesis thought process. Before that, we'll be discussing forensic accounting as a concept itself, because I understand we'll be having lots of advocates as audience, bankers as audience, and a, a lot of general public. I, I, I have noticed that the YouTube platform is pretty popular for Vikas ji. So we'll try to, uh, you know, we'll try to start with the basics and then we'll take it to a, uh, advanced level now so few things i was part of the drafting uh, committee yes i was part of the drafting committee but then it was a committee so i've drafted few standards vetted most of them uh one more important aspect that you know what what do we understand by forensic accounting and why is this sudden relevance I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, Manojji has set a very good context to build upon. So the three acts which has been brought in by Government of India and our Honorable Home Minister Amit Shah Ji, which has been brought in, they emphasis on the forensic evidence. In fact, so he quoted a date 11th August 2023 when these bills were brought. I mean that I suppose that was the last day or the second last day when the parliament session ended but let me take you a year back you know i graduated from national forensic science university rather not graduated i did my phd from national forensic science university it's a it's a university based out in ahmedabad which comes under ministry of home affairs and then for my conno convocation we had this honorable minister who was handing over the degree being a phd holder i was among the first two three people to get those get that degree and in his speech there on 28th August, he told that there is a significant change coming in law where the relevance and importance of forensic evidence will be increasing many fold than what it is. Now, when we say this, that the relevance and importance of uh, you know, relevance and importance of, uh, of forensic evidence will be increasing. What do we mean by that? So if you must have noticed for those who have read the bills, for those who have not, I let you know that any offense which has a imprisonment over six years would require an opinion of forensic professional. Now we don't mean only forensic accounting. It, it, it encompasses all branches of science. So 
whatever is the crime, the moment the imprisonment is more than six years, a forensic opinion would be mandatory in this case. Okay. Now, in fact, the Delhi police, which comes under direct ministry of home government of India, they have already issued a government resolution where it says that for any, any offense having imprisonment more than seven years, forensic evidence is mandatory. Now, let us come to the forensic accounting and investigation standards, why they were needed, why they have been brought in, what is the thought process and what exactly are the standards. We'll have a short discussion on all these concepts. First of all, why these standards? What was the need? Why the Institute of Chartered Accountants formed these standards? So let me quickly discuss this. Uh, fortunately, I was privileged to be part of the committee from the very beginning. So I'm aware about the thought process. Now, you know, in case of any financial dispute, in case of any financial crime, in case of most of money laundering offenses, most of Ponzi schemes, you require an assistance of chartered accountant either during the course of investigation or during evidence discovery or during arguing in court of law. Now, when the relevance of the accounting work becomes so high, then they need some standardization. So, IBC, the insolvency professionals, they were engaging chartered accountants to do a forensic investigation to find where the money went. Advocates engage chartered accountants for uh, investigating or assisting them to discover evidence, give opinion. Then we have courts requiring, we have tribunals, arbitral arbitrators, they all require professionals to give their opinion in these cases. Now, there was no standard or benchmark or rather white paper as well, which defined as to what is the requirement, what is the requirement and what is the minimum barometer, minimum benchmark that a chartered accountant is supposed to give so that the report becomes good fair, usable, reliable, relevant. Okay. Everybody used to write the report. Everybody used to give the report as per his or her wisdom. Unregulated field tha pura. Agar unregulated field hai, to main report apne hisaab se deta tha. Thik hai, that was the idea, which was not wrong, of course. But then slowly and steadily the practice evolved. Stakes and sizes became bigger. We have seen instances where courts have recommended, even the highest court, Honorable Supreme Court has recommended forensic investigation in few of the cases. So the importance increased. Now, in order to facilitate and in order to protect all the stakeholders, when we say all the stakeholders, it includes the professional who does the investigation. It includes the advocate who, uh, on whose behalf, who engages the professional for the investigation. It also includes the client uh, who, who's the subject matter of all the investigation. So to protect the interest of all these stakeholders, there are some frameworks and there are some minimum performances which are codified in form of forensic accounting and investigation standards. Again, the standards apply only to chartered accountant investigators. The standards apply only to chartered accountant investigators and they don't apply to any other. So if you engage somebody else, if you engage somebody who's not a chartered accountant, the standards are not mandatory for him or her. He or she may choose to use these standards as a benchmark. Okay. So the idea is that say if, if some advocate or some court appoints a accountant in order to investigate or find the money trail, then such accountant can benchmark whatsoever he is doing with a fixed set of guidelines. These guidelines are codified into standards. Okay. These guidelines are codified into the standards. This is the 
forensic accounting and investigation standards so i do have a, a screen i do have a slide show let me introduce this slide show i would request the hosts to permit me to share the slide so i can share the slides okay i suppose i still can't share this slide vikas ji allow karna slide share allow it ji allow it ha ya to co host bana dijiye mujhe to ha ho gaya ho gaya ho gaya sir ho gaya सर मैंने कहा ना सिस्टम मेरा नहीं है इसीलिए थोड़ा सा दिक्कत है सो आई जस्ट यू नो आई जस्ट लॉग ऑफ एंड लॉग इन बिकॉज माय सिस्टम इज आस्किंग फॉर सम परमिशन आई हैव गिवन दी परमिशन बट इट्स सेइंग दैट आई हैव टू क्विट एंड रीजॉइन आई जस्ट रीजॉइन चलिए जब तक डॉक्टर साहब ज्वाइन करते हैं दुर्गेश पांडे जी तब तक वी कैन हैव ए स्मॉल टॉक विद अस हाउ मेनी पर्सन अमंग अस आर क्रिमिनल लॉयर्स कैन दे रेज देयर हैंड एंड यू नो टेल अस हाउ दे आर एट प्रेजेंट डूइंग इन्वेस्टिगेशंस बिकॉज़ वी पीपल आर चार्ट अकाउंट्स मेनली प्रोफेशनली टिल डॉक्टर दुर्गेश कम्स ओवर विद देयर प्लीज शेयर योर एक्सपीरियंस एज अ क्रिमिनल लॉयर विकास जी जस्ट चेकिंग इट आउट इफ समबडी एल्प But I think mostly today are chartered accountants because a lot of them are unfamiliar with names. The Gechi ko unmute kara dijiye. Haan, yes sir. Yeah. Sorry for the disturbance, and then probably yes. Now I can share my slide. I suppose the screen is visible. Absolutely visible. Please carry yes. on. Yes. so i was telling that the objective for having these standards for investigation was this and then the institute of chartered accountants of india and india became the first country to have full set of 20 20 standards plus three overarching documents so technically we have 23 standards to guide the entire investigative process as to how it should be done how one should communicate how evidence should be discovered how report should be given and how to uh, continuously improve the investigative practices that is the idea of the standard so if you will see we have this 20 plus 3 documents now when we say this standards these standards will help the user to set a minimum set of expectation from the professional who is investigating and the standard has been devised by having some basic principles so if you will remember not long ago we had a decision by the apex court where the apex court gave a judgment that the borrower should be given an opportunity of being heard before they are labeled as willful defaulter i am not sure about the citation of that particular case but i understand this was a hyderabad based company in which case the honorable supreme court gave a decision that before naming willful defaulter the borrower should be given an oppor uh, opportunity of being heard and of course it goes with the principle of natural justice or the ultram partum that somebody has to be given a uh, a chance to represent him only then he can be castigated for anything okay now principles like this where a professional sitting in his office not getting data 
should not write something which is not palatable, which is not advisable, which is not acceptable, and which may not pass the judicial scrutiny. Such guidance is attempted to be provided in the standards. Okay. So the first three documents, and we'll be discussing these documents with the relevance as to how relevant this is in investigation. I, I did see there was a question. I did see there was a question as to who can become a forensic auditor, you know. So if we talk about career as to whether it is important and mandatory that only chartered accountants can do the forensic investigation. Sir, the answer to this question is no. There's no, I mean, this profession, this area of forensic investigation, or as some people call it forensic audit, this area is not reserved only for accountants or chartered accountants. There is a career in this for anyone and everyone, because in my experience, I understand forensic investigation is nothing but extension of logic and common sense. Bohut sara logic, bohut sara common sense, aap apna istemal kare, usse you can weave a picture, tell a story, write a report and take the case to its logical conclusion. Okay. So it's not important to have, yes, if you have a degree in accounting, of course it is desirable. The second thing that in all the forensic investigation where disputes are involved, your report becomes a subject matter of cross-examination. The moment the report is cross-examined, your credential as an expert needs to be established. Okay. So to establish your credential as an expert, to establish your credential as an expert, you need a professional qualification in accounting. Okay. So it's always desirable. Now let us come to the document and please feel free to ask questions because you know, your questions will, your questions will help us to break the monotony. Parishani aisa hota hai na virtual session mein kisi ka chehra dikhta nahi hai, pata nahi hota hai kaun kitne ruchi se sun raha hai, kya sun rahe hai, kya nahi sun rahe hai. So there are a lot of advantages of the virtual session, but yes, there are certain disadvantages as well because the speaker is not able to see the audience and uh, you really can't watch the reaction. Nevertheless, let us. I'll just cut short. They say no. If the audience continues to remain the same, it means they're engaged. Number one, and number two, it is always they're not captivated. They're all captivated audience rather than captivated ones. And I. I agree, sir. But sir, you know, it's also said that the speaker derives his power from the audience. And that's true. But otherwise, I'm saying because it's uh, by free choice. It's not that some powerful person has come and people have logged in. Here, all people are those who are actually engaged, wanting to learn, and especially from a person like you. No, 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 sir. Definitely, I am. I'm really privileged, happy, and delighted. Let us move on. So, I that is what I was telling that I would encourage you to ask questions so that we can uh, keep answering that and then we can have a dialogue instead of a monologue. Okay. Now let us move forward. So the first three documents that we have framework, preface and basic principles, the preface outlines as to how the standards were set, what was done. So public exposure study group, this, that it is the standard. So that is not very relevant preface at our level. Then comes the framework. Now, when we discuss the framework, the framework is like the structure which determines as to how the standard is designed. Now, why do we discuss the framework and the structure? The reason is that when you want to understand the report or when you want to discuss the findings in a report, you as a user, you as a user need to know as to what is the minimum benchmark that you should expect from a professional whom you have engaged for the uh, assignment. Okay. So that is the reason you need to understand. Now, 
the moment we say framework all the standards are logically divided into six session uh, six sections okay so we have introduction scope explanatory comments date when what is applicable and we have a beautiful section in all the standards which is called as documents for compliance now this document for compliance this is a very important section this is a very important section in all the standards and how it is relevant i let you know it is very important for both the councils both the prosecution and the defense council as well as the professional because the standards are pervasive and at a very high level the standards don't say how how things are to be done is not said by the standard but the standard says what needs to be done so the process or the procedure is not defined in any of the standards this process or procedure is defined in a document called as implementation guides which has also been released the standards only say how okay or rather what sorry sorry the standards only say what what needs to be done that is discussed in the standards now coming to the sixth section i was telling one of the section is documents for confirmance okay why document for confirmance is a beautiful or is a very good section i'll i'll just take you there where we have the yeah here so this is the format for the standards okay so we have introduction and scope objective requirement explanatory comment documentation of work procedures this is what i was telling now this documentation of work procedure this this standard is itself lists out it gives a list of documents which are required to be maintained by the professional in order to demonstrate confirmance to the standard to so, sab standard mein hi ek section mein ye likh diya hai ki agar aap is standard ko comply kiye hain तो क्या क्या डॉक्यूमेंट आपके पास होना चाहिए दिस हैज दिस विल हेल्प द प्रोफेशनल टू नो एज टू वॉट इज डॉक्यूमेंट यू टू मेंटेन दिस विल हेल्प बोथ द काउंसिल एज आई सेड बोथ दोकेट द प्रोसिक्यूशन इन द डिफेंस इन ऑर्डर टू टेस्ट द वेलिडिटी एंड इन ऑर्डर टू क्रॉस एग्जाम इन द प्रोफेशनल एज टू वेदर ही हैज डन द वर्क इन द वे ही इज सपोज टू ओके सो दैट इज द structure of the standard now if you will notice the standard nowhere uses the word forensic audit though we use the word colloquially as forensic audit the standard which is issued by the institute of chartered accountants of india nowhere uses the word forensic audit now it is specifically and explicitly not used the word audit why the reason behind that let me explain the reason behind that you know the reason for not using the word audit is to first audit as we know is typically our assurance function okay so the true and fair view that is given the tax audit the statutory audit the propriety audit these audits as we know these fall under the definition of audit whereas forensic accounting the word forensic accounting is used because first the institute did not want the institute did not want the users to be confused between audit and investigation second globally the profession is called as forensic accounting and not audit the problem is that in our country accounting is treated as bookkeeping okay accounting is treated as bookkeeping but that is not the case accounting is pervasive accounting is a huge discipline where accounting includes audit that is why the word accounting is used in fact the institute strongly recommends not to use the word forensic audit instead to use the word forensic accounting we also have differentiated investigation so forensic accounting is one part and investigation so wheresoever the professional uses the accounting skills that will 
come under the definition of forensic accounting and wheresoever the professional of course calculations will be everywhere but then where core accounting debits and credits are not involved in operational areas stock calculate karna hai diversion of fund khojna hai you know in areas like that it will fall under the definition of investigation okay so forensic accounting and investigation now these are some basic principles which are required to be followed when the investigation is done okay these are some basic principles which are required to be followed when the investigation is done the first set of principle is for the first set of principle is for individual that is his quality his attributes and the second set of the second set of uh, principle is for the performance and is related to the engagement so the first set of principles 1 to 5 are very simple that is independence integrity due professional care confidentiality skill and competence ye gun jo hai wo vyakti mein hona chahiye jo kaam kar raha hai these qualities are required to be in the professional who is doing the work whereas the second set of principles if you will see the second set of basic principle that is contextualization of situation now what do we mean by contextualization of situation i'll just explain couple of them so that we'll understand what is the expectation so the moment we say contextualization of situation now in case of any investigation opinions can't be formed or report can't be given simply based on one particular finding but then one has to understand the professional whosoever is doing the assignment is conducting the engagement has to understand the entire context only then he'll be able to give a credible report like let me explain it uh, connected to a real world situation see i understand a lot of us must be watching uh, you know binge watching those serials on netflix so if you watch a serial on netflix say agar aap mirzapur serial amazon prime par dekhte hain aur iska uske season 2 ka episode 5 dekhte hain i am sure it will be difficult for you to understand ki characters kahan se develop hue kahan ja rahe hain kahan move kar rahe hain to ek episode dekh ke aap apna opinion nahi bana sakte hain it is similar to that you know you have to see a holistic and pervasive picture of the entire engagement this is called as contextualization of situation so contextualization of situation is a basic principle that whenever a professional opines in case of forensic accounting or investigative reports he has to he has to see the basic principles okay uh, he has to follow the basic principles and he has to see the entire context okay i hope the concept of basic principles is clear then we have primacy for truth respecting rights and obligations separating facts of from opinion so on and so forth one more thing which i would like to clarify here and then i would like to make it more clear for the you, uh, for the listeners is that uh, you know uh, we have separating facts from opinions so the entire forensic investigation exercise is a fact finding exercise okay it's a fact finding exercise by a large rather in all the cases i am not supposed to give opinions in fact i'll tell you you know we discuss this in a lot of sessions where we discuss report writing report in itself is an art writing report in itself is an art jaise main aapko bataun और उस रिपोर्ट से इतना जादू हो सकता है द रिपोर्ट कैन डू सो मच मैजिक आई जस्ट टेल यू हाउ एंड वाई सो इफ आई राइट अ पैराग्राफ इन द रिपोर्ट दैट सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स वर केप इन द फोर्थ ड्रॉवर ऑफ द अलमीरा और राधर नॉट केप वर बरीड इन द फोर्थ ड्रॉवर ऑफ द एलमीरा with lots of unimportant document making it difficult for us to get those document give incriminating evidence against the alleged accused okay this is one statement in the audit okay 
Now I consider this statement not to express facts, but to give opinion because of the use of the adjectives, some very important document were buried in the Almira. You know, this itself castigates the person ki nahi, usne kuch galati kiya hai. Instead of that, a neutral statement should be written that we have found document which were kept inside the cupboard, which were not readily and easily accessible and the documents have high quality evidence which demonstrate or which confirms involvement of the alleged accused. So something like this needs to be written a neutral statement rather than those colored statement or statements colored with one's opinion. Okay. Now, let me move forward. In fact, we have 20 standards. So I'll just run through the slides and I would like to explain the essence of each. I don't know whether we'll be able to discuss all of them, but I would like to give a flavor as to what is expected and what is there in all of them. And then probably someday at future, depending on how people take this, we can delve deep into each of the standards. Okay. So moving forward, the first standard that we have and the standards are number 110, 120, 130, 140. This is how the standards are numbered. Now, why this numbering? Because if we have something between fraud, risk and engagement, or if we have something connected to engagement, that will be numbered 111, okay, 112, so on and so forth. So this follows a standard, uh, an international standard of uh, numbering. Okay. So let us come to the first point, which says the nature of engagement. Now, the first thing that the, that the investigator needs to do is to classify as to what is the nature of engagement, whether it is forensic accounting, whether it is, it is investigation or whether it is purely litigation support. Now, what do we mean by litigation support? All these three things have been defined in the standard itself. So the moment we say forensic accounting, forensic accounting is usage of accounting skills, usage of accounting skills to highlight any accounting legal violations or contractual breaches. Okay. We have given an example, financial statement manipulation, fund diversion, anti-money laundering, license fee, duty, tax evasion, so on and so forth. Okay. The second point, investigation. What can be investigation? So when we discuss investigation, investigation is to determine the facts and circumstances and to gather evidences, okay, to gather evidences to prove, disprove the hypothesis. Now, what is hypothesis? We have hypothesis ahead. So whistleblower complaint, ethical code of violation, insurance claims, all this intellectual property, all this will come under investigation. And this is pure litigation support where the professional is engaged by the attorney or by the courts or by the executing authority to assist them for the judicial work that will fall under litigation support. Okay. So the first step is to find what kind of assignment it is so that next course of action can be taken. Now, say if I'm appointed for an investigation, if I'm appointed for an investigation, which is huge. In fact, the biggest investigation that I have done till date is for what? Uh, 9,000 crores. We did the biggest investigation for 9,000 crores, which had a, uh, which, which was span over more than 20 states of our country and having more than, uh, affecting the lives of more than 20 lakh people. So it comes to roughly around 1.25 billion US dollars and 2 million affected person. That was the biggest investigation that we did. Now, why am I telling you the size? Because once we start the investigation, not all the aspects are equally important. So it will happen that there will be something that will be very critical and important that you have to see first. There will be something that will not be very relevant, very important, and then we will see it. So, 
you have to grade that based on the risk. So we have to define the risk and we have to prioritize the work to identify the fraud investigators, to identify the most vulnerable areas and give due consideration to the most vulnerable areas. Okay. This is covered in fraud risk. Let us move forward. The third point which we have, this is laws and regulations. The third standard that we have, this is law and regulation. Now, unlike the statutory audit or the tax audit, so the statutory audit, as we say, is governed by the Companies Act. Okay. The Companies Act has specific provision whereby a chartered accountant is appointed to audit the books of account. In tax audit, again, we have a specific section which, which puts an onus on the SSE to appoint a chartered accountant to conduct the audit. Okay. So these, in these cases, the law defines the work. Now, what does laws, law and regulation says? This standard says that a forensic professional or a forensic investigation can be done based on two situations. Okay. And please remember, there is no guideline, no regulation, no white paper as to how to appoint a forensic professional. Koi bhi institute ka nahi hai. Na RBI ka hai, na SEBI ka hai, na IRDA ka hai. Sab apne apne hisaap se, apne apne wisdom se, kuch kuch regulation issue kiye hai, aur uske hisaap se appoint hota hai. So, none of the institutes, none of the regulatory agencies have standardized policy. They do it based on situation. They do it based on need. Okay. Now, coming to this, this standard says that the appointment can be made in two ways. One, by virtue of some law and regulation. Like the IBC, the IBC code empowers the insolvency professional to appoint a transaction auditor. Okay, to appoint a transaction auditor. This is in accordance with specific regulations. Similarly, there are certain act, there are certain law which empower the appropriate authority to appoint a professional for investigation. However, when there is no such law and simply a professional is engaged by someone for the investigation, that will be covered by the contract act. Okay, that will be covered by the contract act. So, the knowledge of law and regulation is very important for appointment of the professional because the professional has to work under the ambit of that law. And again, principle of natural justice will be given due importance. Let us move forward. So, you did hear me using the word hypothesis earlier. Now, what is hypothesis? Okay. So, you know, when you get a case, when you get a case, like we got a case from a stock exchange where they said that the alleged accused is doing systematic fraud, systematic tax evasion, systematic tax evasion using synchronized trade. Okay, that was the mandate. Systematic tax evasion using synchronized state. Now, most of these frauds runs into tens of crores and you know hundreds of crore. The problem is as to how do you start? Shuru kahan se kiya jaye? Uska koi idea nahi hota hai. It's very difficult to understand because the ramification is so large. The documents are so many in number. You really don't know when to start. So what do you do? You break the cases into small parts. The case is broken into small parts and then you design a hypothesis. Now, what is hypothesis? Simply saying a hypothesis is a question framed, a question frame which will be examined throughout the course of investigation and evidence will be collected, evidence will be gathered so as the final conclusion can be drawn as to whether the hypothesis is correct, whether the hypothesis is acceptable or whether the hypothesis is not acceptable. Okay. So this is 
hypothesis. It's a working theory. It's a provisional theory which is created in order to assist the professional for the investigation. Okay. Now, the second set of standards, this is the 200 series. Very quickly, I'll be explaining. Uh, sir, Vikas Ji, apne question answers ke liye, sir, kitna samay? 5-10 minute? You can take the things forward. Now we have received only two messages from the, on the YouTube that I can read. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So probably we can discuss this for 20, 25 more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Because if the conceptual understanding is better than questions don't arise as such. Yeah. But if we no. spend time more. On... Yeah, yeah. If there yes. are questions, we will take it definitely. No problem. No issue. problem. And uh, the, the, I, I did, if I see a question in the chat box, I'll try to answer that during course of my discussion. So uh, the audience can put yeah. the question and then probably we'll see when we get there. Okay. Yeah. So let us come quickly to the engagement objectives, engagement acceptance, engagement uh, uh, appointment using work of an expert. Let me quickly demystify this for you. So, you know, there are ways and means where the engagement itself, the problem is that when you get a client, when you get a person, you really don't know as to what exactly you need to ask from the professional whom you are engaging. So I have been part of several investigations with police department where we have to pinpoint कि आप हमसे एक्सपेक्ट क्या करते हैं क्या चीज हम खोज दें या क्या चीज पर हम मेहनत करें तो वो आपके सबसे ज्यादा काम का है ओके सो देयर हैव बीन सेवरल केसेस वेयर वी डू इन्वेस्टिगेशन फॉर प्रोसिक्यूशन फॉर पुलिस डिपार्टमेंट वेयर इन वी हैव टू आस्क द कंसर्नड ऑफिसर और द कंसर्नड पर्सन एज टू व्हाट इज वन थिंग व्हिच यू वांट अस टू हेल्प विद द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट देयर इज नो डेफिनेशन ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव इन फैक्ट टू वीक्स अगो I was in Delhi. I met a client who wanted me to do a private investigation. There was a dispute between the client and his uncle for a huge amount of assets, which included businesses and vehicles, fleet of vehicles. They owned businesses and vehicles. But then he was not clear as to what exactly he wanted. Eki line ka mandate hota hai that I am being cheated. I want you to find how am I being cheated. So this standard requires that there has to be an engagement objective. Okay. There has to be an engagement objective and the objective shall be clearly defined. This objective will help in forming the scope and then the scope will be the basis for preparing the report. So it flows from engagement, scope, investigation and then the report. Okay. Now, these are some indicate, indicative engagement objectives given and these are again married to the uh, 110, Forensic Accounting, Investigation and Litigation Support. Okay. Let us come to 220, Engagement, Acceptance and Appointment. Now, the objective can be everything under sun, but then whatever engagement objective is agreed upon between the professional and the person appointing that has to be codified and documented under something called as engagement acceptance. Okay. This will be called as engagement acceptance and we have appointment letter. Now it is noticed that a lot of agencies, when the agencies appoint professionals, they have to give a work order or they have to give an appointment letter because any report from any professional without a proper appointment or without a appropriate appointment is not acceptable and does not has evidentiary value. Okay. So this is engagement acceptance and appointment. Okay. Now, in most of the cases that we see, accounting is just one part. Like I'll give you an example. We did 
a investigation for a insurance company where in fact we were appointed by the client not by the insurance company where we were supposed to give a independent opinion on the value of the stock that is lost so there was a dispute the insurance company the insured the insured person the claimant he was telling that i had lost 38 crore indian rupees whereas the insurance company agreed for 9 crore indian rupees okay so in cases like this you have appointment of professionals to scientifically quantify the amount now the problem in such cases is that if the business if if the professional does not has knowledge of the business and which which is obvious in most of the cases which is obvious in most of the cases how does the professional forms the opinion so in that case he has to use the work of an expert how to use the work of an expert how to appoint the expert whose responsibility it is to appoint the expert who keeps the document who owns the report whose liability it is ultimately for the report this is all codified in the standard so the professional is supposed to have a mechanism whereby he can get the working paper of the expert the professional has to verify the expert's credential the professional may hire the expert all these things are mentioned in using work of an expert let us move forward this is engaging with agencies now when the professional works with agencies when we say agencies these are law enforcement agencies so you must have seen a lot of law enforcement agencies and regulatory bodies appointing accountants appointing forensic professionals for investigation when we say investigation we try to include the cyber investigations as well okay so we try to include the cyber investigation we try to cover the data recovery we try to cover the data recovery from cloud we try to cover the mobile forensics all these things also come under this ambit that is why we have investigation that is why we have litigation support okay they may not fall in the definition of forensic accounting but they will fall in the definition of investigation and litigation support okay so a lot of agencies engage professional to do all this work okay to do all this work now working with agencies is a different ball game their expectation is at a different level you know they may uh, i have noticed that i i get a call several times from the office of superintendent of police where i am told that can you come tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to our office so you know the language is कि क्या आप कल सुबह आ सकते हैं बट देन एक्सपेक्टेशन एंड टोन इज की कल सुबह में दस बजे आपको आना है यू नो द टोन इज दैट यू हैव टू कम टू मॉर्निंग दी मॉर्निंग दे लास्ट दैट वेदर इट विल बी कन्वीनियंट फॉर यू टू कम टू मॉरो मॉर्निंग टेन ओ क्लॉक बट देन द एक्सपेक्टेशन एंड टोन ऑफ वुड बी दैट यू हैव टू कम टू मॉरो मॉर्निंग टेन ओ क्लॉक बिकॉज वी नीड यू वी नीड टू डिस्कस समथिंग सो इट्स अ डिफरेंट बॉल गेम वर्किंग विद द एजेंसीज नाउ हाउ टू वर्क विद द एजेंसीज हाउ टू एस्टेब्लिश अ प्रोटोकॉल फॉर कम्युनिकेशन हाउ टू रिप्लाई टू देम how to include in the scope all these things are given in engaging with agencies okay engaging with agencies and why the relevance say sometime if there is a question as to why did you do this or why you did not do this now this would be codified in the standard as to why as a professional as a investigating professional i did something or why as a investigating professional i did not do something i will be having my rational which will be codified in the standard okay this is list of agencies and regulatory bodies which i just discussed economic offence wing serious fraud investigating office enforcement directorate cbi and so on so forth now communication with stakeholders you know the communication because in my experience i have noticed that in in an engagement of disputes there's always a dispute related to the report itself if the report will not be to the liking of the client there will always be a dispute so how to communicate with all the stakeholder has been laid out in a separate standard now the standard lists out 
primary stakeholder and other stakeholder. So whosoever appoints the professional is primary stakeholder. Everybody else is secondary stakeholder. Then we have something called as essential matters and significant matter. So wheresoever and a list indicative list is defined wheresoever the professional has to communicate wheresoever the professional has to communicate which jeopardizes the investigation itself that will be covered in essential matters wheresoever the professional has his own discretion that can be covered in significant matter okay this is a list that essential matter has to be conveyed significant matter can be conveyed so one is shall other is may you know now the 300 series we will not be going slide by slide for the 300 series because this is actually how the work is done so i'll just show you this slide and i'll just say few sentences about them and we can move forward okay so 300 series is actually how the work is done so you plan the work okay you plan the assignment while planning you decide the risk you decide the number of resource you decide the technology you decide the business you decide the hypothesis you decide the working methodology everything is decided in the planning phase okay Next, we have evidence and documentation. So we have we have some tests. The moment we say evidence and the evidence is collected, the professional shall be collecting the evidence. So the evidence has to be relevant and reliable and the document has to be appropriate and sufficient. OK, the document. So anything, everything falls under the definition of document. Whatever can be used or is directly related to the case will form evidence ownership and custody of all the documents will be with the professional so this is evidence and documentation as to how to collect evidence how to record evidence how to maintain the document who owns the document all these questions are answered in evidence and documentation then this is conducting work procedure based on the nature of the work based on the quantum of the work based on the particular case, there will be decided as to how the work will be done. Sometimes you interact with the client. Sometimes you don't interact with the clients. There are some people who work at the back of the scene. There are some people who face the client. So all these things are defined in conducting work procedures. Moving ahead, this is conducting interviews. Interviews are integral part of the investigation process. So when we say interviews are integral part of the investigation process, what do we mean by this? Interviews are taken to corroborate the evidences that we have found. So the entire process of conducting interview, how questions are to be asked, what should be the environment, how you should deal with the question, how you should record the interview, everything is answered in conducting interview. Okay, so confidentiality, not discussing the contents of the interview outside the interview team, not to threaten the uh, person, not to miscommunicate, not to give false assurances, all these things are codified in the interview portion. Okay, this is review and supervision. Typically, somebody will be doing the work, there has to be somebody to review the work how the review and how the supervision should be conducted that is mentioned in this standard okay now a very crucial part in the standard is testifying before the competent authority whether you like it or not testifying is a essential part in the case so all the process related to testifying and all the guidance related to testifying and how one has to testify kya chhootna nahi kuch chahiye all this assistance is provided by this standard so one has to be independent in approach 
he has to inform that there is whether there is some conflict he has to establish his credential he has to strictly he has to strictly speak on the facts all these provisions are codified in the standards okay all these provisions are codified in the standard 360 let us move forward yeah now we come to 400 series what do we have in 400 series so the 400 series is for specialized area right now we just have three specialized area this first one is applying data analysis now this is for data analysis that we see in the digital domain so we have two standard one is for e discovery that is 420 how to get how to collect evidences in a digital domain so hash values collection maintaining the integrity maintaining the chain of custody all these things are covered in 420 that is the evidence and mind you as i told each standard has a section as to demonstration of conformance to standard so document list which demonstrate conformance to standard so if i say that i have collected the evidence i have collected the evidence digital evidence by applying the scientific process there is a list of document which is mentioned that i have to maintain with me so that i can demonstrate that yes i have followed the standard in letter and spirit to collect the document and that is the most crucial part because this will stay for long these are all disputes which will be discussed by various courts okay now data analysis when i say this we discussed about evidence get, gathering in digital domain that is e discovery but if we talk about data analysis then data analysis is something which is uh, you know it, where we have large number of data large number of data and the professional has to make sense of those data so what technique will be used how will be the flow what is expected of the outcome all these things will be covered in data analysis 420 evidence gathering we have already discussed which is e-discovery now this is again a standard probably as as advocates as ips you must be getting a lot of cases you must be getting a lot of cases which are related to loans and borrowings so there's a specialized standards which deals with how to investigate loans how to investigate borrowings how to classify misutilization of funds all these things are codified in 430 okay all these things are mentioned in 430 regarding loans and borrowings because this is one area which is prone to a lot of disputes we come to last two standards which is reporting results and quantity control reporting results is nothing but giving the report so this I, I, you know i always tell to my team that doing excellent work and giving a poor report is like do, not doing the work you know kaam kaisa bhi kare the report has to be very good and sufficient effort has to be put in in order to draft the report because it is the report which is the ambassador and it is the report which will be discussed at all forum further and this is again please do note that the standard explicitly prohibits the professional not to express opinion of guilt or innocence so i as an investigator will not be telling that whether this person is innocent or whether this person is guilty that is the job of the courts my role simply ends by giving my report which is the statement of facts okay so i i always advise people to follow a maxim do what you write and write what you do okay 
So this has to be followed in reporting result. And this is there in the result. So there's also an indicative for there's no fixed format. Ki forensic accounting ka report kaisa hona chahiye. But then there are some guidances which is given as to how the report is to be written. So title, address, distribution rate, scope. If you have used an expert that if you have engaged an expert and you have not used his work, then you are supposed to give an explanation as to why you have not used that expert. Okay. So such small, small things are included in the report. The last standard is on quality assurance. This is more in line with the institute's requirement that there is to be continuous quality improvement, quality improvement and quality control. There may be some sort of verification by a fellow member on the report. The modalities will be discussed later, but then it is on quality control and quality improvement. This was a short primer on all the standards that we have and the expectations that we have. Now, again, I told that why this is important because the landscape where professionals are engaged for investigation will change once the standards are applied in letter and spirit. These standards have been made mandatory only from 1st of July. It is, they are still evolving and they will have to pass the judicial scrutiny. But then I thought that as prosecutors, defendant, attorneys, IPs, this is something which is crucial in economic offenses, which you should know. So that was all from my side. Thank you so much. Over to uh, Vigazi, sir. This is by what are the tools required for forensic auditing? So, sir, the tools, you know, there are a lot of tools. This totally depends on the situation. So, as such, despite working for more than 200 cases, I'm still struggling to find a tool which can convert the physical bank statements into uh, electronic form. But there are a lot of tools for e-discovery. So there's something called as Ricova. There's something called as, um, what do you say? DT key logger. There's, uh, there, there are a lot of tools, you know, you have idea, you have ACL for data analytics. So there are a lot of tool for data recovery, data duplication, data cloning, but as such to find the money trail using the account numbers, there are very few tools because of the unstructured data. I hope I have answered his question. Yeah. This is by Nitika Modi on YouTube. She says, can a bank, which is not a part of the consortium, propose forensic audit after consortium has conducted forensic audit? Can the proposed forensic audit by the bank be challenged by way of writ petition? So I told that, you know, there's no law in force which governs the profession of forensic audit or investigation. In, a, in absence of a specific law, we go back to the Indian Contract Act. Now, if the consortium has done a forensic audit and you are not satisfied with that forensic audit, please understand that why you are not satisfied. Are you not satisfied because the outcome is not your liking or are you not satisfied because the there is lack of competence or there is lack of efforts from the side of professional? If the reason is that the results are not to your liking. I really don't think any forensic audit can serve the purpose. But if you have strong grounds that the professional has not done his work diligently or there are new evidences which has come into light, I am sure you can order a forensic. Even if there's nothing there, you as a banker and you have lent your money, you can always order a forensic audit. I don't think it can be challenged. So, yeah, there's another question that says, any book for the IP professional for transaction audit and forensic assignment? This is by CA uh, Brenda Bitsaria. Uh, uh, you know, the, the landscape of forensic audit is still evolving. So I'm attempting to write book, not particularly catering to transaction audits. So uh, there's nothing which I am aware of 
you can only resort to the judgments of the court the jayprakash associates the jayprakash uh, associate and jayprakash infrastructure case is a classic landmark case which covers almost all the aspects so 43 45 49 50 66 all the aspects of transaction audit is covered in that case so that is something which you can resort to but then i am not aware about a specific book which has been written and which can i can authoritatively tell you that you can read this and you will have a fair understanding so gaji like we had uh, it's a hindi english mix so as that talk before we go going live could you just sum it up in 10 to 15 minutes purely in hindi so that the audience who connects uh, yeah so Anji that uh, i when i was connecting with you i could understand and during the session it made me more clear that you are equally versed you are like more you are more like a surya prakash who can play both sides are sir <clears throat> thank you so Sorry, much Maya, thank you so much so uh सिर्फ हिंदी में बोलूं तो वैसे हिंदी में बोलना मुझे अच्छा लगता है नेटिव हिंदी स्पीकर हूं हिंदी पहली भाषा है मेरी ठीक है अंग्रेजी तो बोलना पड़ता है लेकिन हिंदी बोलना ज्यादा अच्छा लगता है चलिए अगर मैं इन स्टैंडर्ड्स को हिंदी में 10 मिनट में मैं बताऊं तो ऐसा है साहब कि पहले हमारे पास कोई मान लीजिए आप विकास जी एडवोकेट हैं सर ने हमको एक केस में अपॉइंट किया है जो उनके पास एक डिस्प्यूट का केस आया फाइनेंशियल डिस्प्यूट का केस आया है हमने उसमें अपना इन्वेस्टिगेशन किया है हमने उनको रिपोर्ट दिया है अब प्रॉब्लम ऐसा था कि उनको भी नहीं पता है कि मेरे रिपोर्ट से क्या एक्सपेक्टेशन है मुझे भी नहीं पता है कि मेरे रिपोर्ट में क्या क्या कंटेंट होना चाहिए यहां तक तो फिर भी ठीक है पर अगर हम बैंक के बात करें जैसे एस के बड़े बड़े केसेस हैं सीबीआई के बड़े बड़े केसेस हैं इसमें ना बैंक को क्लैरिटी होती है कि क्या करवाएं ना प्रोफेशनल को क्लैरिटी होती है कि वो क्या करे तो उसके लिए मिनिमम सेट ऑफ मिनिमम सेट ऑफ प्रोसीजर मिनिमम सेट ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड्स जो हैं वो इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया ने फोरेंसिक अकाउंटिंग एंड इन्वेस्टिगेशन स्टैंडर्ड मार्फत इंट्रोड्यूस किया है अब क्योंकि इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया सिर्फ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स को गवर्न करता है इसीलिए इंस्टीट्यूट ने ये स्टैंडर्ड्स सिर्फ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स के लिए मैंडेटरी किया हुआ है हाँ अपेक्षा ऐसी है कि जैसे जैसे इन स्टैंडर्ड्स की पॉपुलैरिटी बढ़ेगी जैसे आप अगर किसी आप अगर एडवोकेट या आईपी होके आप किसी प्रोफेशनल को एंगेज कर रहे किसी को भी चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट नहीं किसी भी प्रोफेशनल को अगर आप एंगेज कर रहे हैं तो अब क्योंकि आप इन स्टैंडर्ड से अवगत हो गए और आपको यह सेटिस्फेक्शन होता है कि नहीं ये स्टैंडर्ड्स को यूज करेंगे तो आउटकम जो है एक पर्टिकुलर स्टैंडर्ड का होगा और जिस व्यक्ति को आप एंगेज कर रहे हैं उनको एक लेवल की मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी एक लेवल का एश्योरेंस आपको आएगा जैसे वो मैडम अभी अभी जो प्रश्न पूछी थी वो मैडम ने कहा कि भाई किसी ने ऑलरेडी फोरेंसिक ऑडिट करवाया हुआ है कंसोर्शियम ने ऑलरेडी फोरेंसिक ऑडिट लीड बैंक ने ऑलरेडी फोरेंसिक ऑडिट करवाया हुआ है अब हमको करवाना है तो साहब ये स्टैंडर्ड इंट्रोड्यूस ही इसलिए हुए हैं कि बार बार ना कराना पड़े पहली बार जिसने किया वो ऐसा कहे कि हाँ हमने इन स्टैंडर्ड्स को फॉलो किया और इस स्टैंडर्ड्स के बेसिस पर हमने ये रिपोर्ट दिया ये इन स्टैंडर्ड्स का ऑब्जेक्टिव है अब जैसा मैंने कहा इसमें 20 स्टैंडर्ड हैं और तीन ओवर आर्चिंग डॉक्यूमेंट है ओवर आर्चिंग डॉक्यूमेंट क्या है ये ओवर आर्चिंग डॉक्यूमेंट में फ्रेमवर्क है प्रीफेस है और बेसिक प्रिंसिपल है ये फ्रेमवर्क प्रीफेस और बेसिक प्रिंसिपल जो है ये कॉन्स्टेंटली सभी स्टैंडर्ड्स के लिए एप्लीकेबल है ये पिलर है पाया है स्ट्रेंथ है नीव है ये ठीक है तो ये सबके लिए एप्लीकेबल है कॉन्स्टेंटली थ्रू आउट द एंगेजमेंट इसके अलावा बी स्टैंडर्ड है अब ये जो बी स्टैंडर्ड है ये एस सच चैप्टर नहीं है लेकिन सीरीज है ये छह सीरीज में बांटा हुआ है पहला सीरीज जो है वो इंट्रोडक्शन है अब इंट्रोडक्टरी सीरीज जो है ये इंट्रोडक्टरी सीरीज में साहब क्या है कि इंट्रोडक्टरी सीरीज में स्टैंडर्ड्स जो हैं वो बताए हुए हैं कि एंगेजमेंट का क्या नेचर है जैसे एंगेजमेंट को दो तीन तरह का बताया हुआ है कि लिटिगेशन सपोर्ट का एंगेजमेंट है या इन्वेस्टिगेशन का एंगेजमेंट है या अकाउंटिंग प्योर अकाउंटिंग स्किल्स को इस्तेमाल किया जाए तो फोरेंसिक अकाउंटिंग का एंगेजमेंट है अगर इन्वेस्टिगेशन किया जाए इन्वेस्टिगेशन किया जाए मतलब मान लीजिए स्टॉक का इन्वेस्टिगेशन कर रहे हैं स्टॉक की चोरी स्टॉक का इन्वेस्टिगेशन करते हैं तो फिर वो इन्वेस्टिगेशन की परिभाषा में आएगा 
और अगर आप किसी ट्रिब्यूनल को असिस्ट कर रहे हैं किसी एडवोकेट को असिस्ट कर रहे हैं उनका काम कर रहे हैं तो वो पर्टिकुलर इंडिकेशन सपोर्ट आएगा ठीक है फिर हंड्रेड सीरीज में दूसरा स्टैंडर्ड है फ्रॉड रिस्क अब अगर आप एक केस इन्वेस्टिगेट करते हैं तो सभी फेसेट्स जो है मतलब सभी आयाम जो उस फ्रॉड के हैं वो एक जैसे इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं होंगे तो आप प्रायोरिटाइज करेंगे आप एक सूची बनाएंगे कि कौन सा सबसे जरूरी है उसके बाद कौन सा उसके बाद कौन सा कौन से पे आपको ज्यादा ध्यान देना है कौन से पे आपको विशेष ध्यान देना है कौन सा थोड़ा सा कम ध्यान देने से भी चल जाएगा उसके बाद का स्टैंडर्ड है लॉ एंड रेगुलेशन लॉ एंड रेगुलेशन जो स्टैंडर्ड है उसमें बताया हुआ है कि जो प्रोफेशनल का अपॉइंटमेंट होता है वो दो तरीके से हो सकता है या तो आप जिस कायदे में अपॉइंटमेंट करें उस कायदे में प्रावधान हो कि एक प्रोफेशनल को आप अपॉइंट कर सकते हैं एक प्रोफेशनल का चयन करके आप उनको बोल सकते हैं कि भाई आप इन्वेस्टिगेशन करिए या तो ये उसी पर्टिकुलर कायदे में जैसे हमारे आईबीसी में है इंसॉल्वेंसी बैंक कोड में दिया हुआ है कि आप ट्रांजेक्शन ऑडिटर अपॉइंट कर सकते हैं ऐसे और भी एक्ट है जिसमें दिया हुआ है कि आप पर्टिकुलर प्रोफेशनल को अपॉइंट कर सकते हैं ठीक है या तो फिर आप इंडियन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एक्ट के तहत आपने हमको एंगेज किया आपने कहा कि भाई आप इतनी चीज आप इतना आ, काम कर दीजिए और इतने असाय इतने ये प्रोसेस हमको मतलब यहां पर इन्वेस्टिगेशन आप हमको कर दीजिए ठीक है तो ये आपका हुआ लॉ एंड रेगुलेशन चौथा स्टैंडर्ड है अप्लाइंग हाइपोथेसिस अप्लाइंग हाइपोथेसिस का मतलब है जब आप इन्वेस्टिगेशन व्यक्ति जब इन्वेस्टिगेशन शुरू करता है प्रोफेशनल शुरू करता है तो पता नहीं होता है कहां से शुरू करें तो उसके लिए एक वर्किंग थ्योरी बनानी पड़ती है एक प्रश्न अपने मन में लेना पड़ता है एक एजम्पन से शुरू करना पड़ता है कि हाँ शायद ऐसा हुआ होगा फिर जो हुआ होगा रहता है उस हुआ होगा को आपको टेस्ट करते रहना पड़ता है उस हुआ होगा के लिए आपको एविडेंस खोजते रहना पड़ता है आपको सबूत खोजते रहने पड़ते हैं और उसको टेस्ट करते रहना पड़ता है और वो थियोरी आखिर में आप लिखोगे कि हाँ जो जो थियोरी हमने शुरू किया था वो सही है या गलत है या हमको एविडेंस नहीं मिले हम ये नहीं कह सकते हैं कि अगर ये, ये सही है या गलत है ठीक है अगला अगर हम बात करें तो दो सीरीज है दो सीरीज में एंगेजमेंट है कि भाई बहुत बार ऐसा होता है कि जब क्लाइंट हमको बुलाते हैं कि भाई आप इन्वेस्टिगेशन करें तो उनको पता ही नहीं होता है कि हमसे क्या चाहते हैं उनके पास तो एक लाइन का जवाब होता है कि हमारे यहाँ फ्रॉड हुआ आप खोजो ठीक है तो पहले तो ये क्लैरिटी लाना पड़ता है कि भाई आप प्रिसाइसली चाहते क्या है क्योंकि अगर जो पच्चीस करोड़ का पचास करोड़ का सौ करोड़ का बैंक का फ्रॉड हुआ हुआ है तो साहब ये पता ही नहीं होता है कि एग्जैक्टली आप क्या चाहते हैं तो आप उसमें ऑब्जेक्टिव डिफाइन कर लें कि आपको क्या चाहिए ये डिफाइन कर लें दूसरा चीज है एक्सेप्टेंस एक्सेप्टेंस का मतलब है कि आप डिफाइन कर लें कि आप क्या क्या करिएगा स्कोपिंग एक्सेप्टेंस ये आपके एंगेजमेंट एक्सेप्टेंस में आएगा ऐसे ही आप सरकार के लिए काम करते हैं किसी लॉ एनफोर्समेंट के लिए काम करते हैं किसी ट्रिब्यूनल के लिए काम करते हैं तो उनसे आप वर्क ऑर्डर पर इंसिस्ट करें कि आप हमें एक वर्क ऑर्डर दीजिए जिस वर्क ऑर्डर में आप लिखिए कि आपकी अपेक्षाएं क्या क्या है हमसे तो वो हम काम करेंगे ठीक है उसके बाद बहुत बार होता है कि प्रोफेशनल अपॉइंट हो गया है पर वो खुद ही सारा काम नहीं कर सकता है अब जैसे मैंने एक केस किया था एक डेढ़ साल पहले मैंने एक केस किया था जिसमें हमको रडार और सोनार का फिजिकल वेरिफिकेशन करना था अब हमारे पास तो बिल आता था साहब कि ये रडार जो है ये रडार है बीस करोड़ रुपए का ठीक है तो मैं तो एक पन्ने के बिल को देख के बोलता था कि ये बीस करोड़ का है पर जब तक वो उस जगह पर जाके देखेंगे नहीं करेंगे नहीं पता नहीं चलेगा तो पता कैसे चलेगा कि ये 20 करोड़ का है या नहीं है ठीक है तो आपको कई बार एक्सपर्ट एंगेज करना पड़ते हैं तो अगला स्टैंडर्ड जो है वो बताता है कि एक्सपर्ट क्या करेगा कैसे करेगा क्या उनका स्कोप है ये सब आपका अगले स्टैंडर्ड में यूजिंग वर्क ऑफ एन एक्सपर्ट दो जो है ये आपका एंगेजिंग विथ एजेंसीज है एंगेजिंग विद एजेंसी का मतलब है जब आपको सीबीआई ईओडब्ल्यू एस एफ आईओ ये बुलाते हैं तो आपको काम किस तरह से करना पड़ता है क्योंकि इनके साथ काम करने की प्रणाली थोड़ी सी अलग होती है इनके रिक्वायरमेंट बदलते रहते हैं इनका काम बदलते रहता है ठीक है तो ये उनके साथ कैसे डील करता है वो 240 में हुआ है 250 में बताया हुआ है कि आप कम्युनिकेशन को डॉक्यूमेंट करते रहिए कौन से ऐसे मैटर हैं कौन से ऐसे पॉइंट्स हैं जिस पे आपको आपके क्लाइंट को बताना ही बताना है बैंक को बताना ही बताना है प्राइवेट क्लाइंट को बताना ही बताना है कौन से ऐसे मैटर है जिसमें आप पर्सनल जजमेंट ले सकते हैं तो कम्युनिकेशन प्रोटोकॉल जो है क्या बात करना है कैसे बात करना है किससे बात करना है ये सब हमारा 250 में कोडिफाइड है 
300 सीरीज जो है ये काम करने पर है बहुत ज्यादा अनिवार्य आप लोगों के लेवल पर नहीं जो खुद काम करता है उसके लिए ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है कि प्लानिंग कैसे करना है एविडेंस कैसे खोजना है डॉक्यूमेंट्स कैसे मेंटेन करना है काम कैसे कैसे करना है इंटरव्यू होता है आपको बुला के व्यक्ति से पूछना है पर आपको यह भी याद रखना है कि आप जिस व्यक्ति से पूछ रहे हैं ये आपके पास कोई कानूनी मैंडेट नहीं आप इंटरोगेशन नहीं कर रहे हैं आप इंटरव्यू ले रहे हैं आप सौहार्दपूर्ण वातावरण में आप दो चार छह प्रश्न उनसे पूछ सकते हैं और तब तक ही पूछ सकते हैं जब तक वो स्वेच्छा से जवाब दे ठीक है क्योंकि आप एक प्राइवेट सिटीजन है अगला भी एक प्राइवेट सिटीजन है तो आप उनके किसी भी राइट का हनन नहीं कर सकते यू कैनॉट इन्फ्रिंज एनी ऑफ इज राइट ठीक है तो आपको उसका ध्यान रखना है इंटरव्यू के दौरान फिर है रिव्यू एंड सुपरविजन कि काम किए हुए काम के ऊपर सुपरवाइज कैसे किया हुआ जाए उसको रिव्यू कैसे किया जाए उसको ओवरसी कैसे किया जाए कि आ, अगला काम सही हुआ है कि नहीं उसके बाद है टेस्टिफाइंग बिफोर कंपिटेंट अथॉरिटीज इस स्टैंडर्ड में क्या है कि ज्यादातर जो रिपोर्ट हैं ये रिपोर्ट डिस्प्यूट का हिस्सा होते हैं या रिपोर्ट डिस्प्यूट का हिस्सा हो जाते हैं नहीं भी दिया हुआ हो तो डिस्प्यूट का हिस्सा भविष्य में हो जाते हैं उस केस में क्रॉस एग्जामिन किया जाता है आपको कोर्ट में जाना पड़ता है ट्रिब्यूनल में जाना पड़ता है तो उसकी आपको तैयारी रखनी पड़ती है और उसमें आप किस तरह से प्रेजेंट करेंगे क्या चीजें आपको बतानी जरूरी हैं, क्या चीजें आपको बताना आपके डिस्क्रिप्शन पर है ये सभी चीजें उसमें बताया हुआ है कि आप अपने फैक्ट्स को प्रेजेंट करें ओपिनियन को ना दे बहुत ये बहुत ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट है जो स्टैंडर्ड में दिया हुआ है कि इट इज प्राइमेसी ऑफ फैक्ट आप सच को खोजे प्राइमेसी ऑफ ट्रूथ ठीक है सच्चाई को खोजे उसके बाद हम स्पेशलाइज्ड एरिया पर आ जाते हैं सब स्पेशलाइज्ड एरिया में तीन स्टैंडर्ड है एक है डेटा एनालिसिस क्योंकि ज्यादातर इन्वेस्टिगेशन में यूज डेटा बिग डेटा वॉल्यूमिनस डेटा जिसका बहुत ज्यादा वेलोसिटी है बहुत ज्यादा वॉल्यूम है वेलोसिटी का मतलब है परिवर्तन बहुत जल्दी जल्दी होता है और बहुत बड़ा डेटा बहुत सारा डेटा जो है वो आता है ठीक है पीछे हमने एक ए, पीछे हमने एक बैंक के लिए काम किया था जिसमें हमारे को 11 साल के बैंक रिकॉर्ड्स को हमको देखना था 18000 लाइन आइटम के बैंक बैलेंस थे तो इस टाइप का डेटा आता है जो कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंज होता हुआ डेटा आता है तो उस पर डेटा एनालिसिस के टेक्निक्स कैसे अप्लाई किए जाए उसके बारे में इंफॉर्मेशन दिया हुआ है अगला हमारे पास है एविडेंस गैदरिंग इन डिजिटल डोमेन एविडेंस गैदरिंग इन डिजिटल डोमेन की अगर हम बात करें तो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एविडेंस क्योंकि सब कुछ अब कंप्यूटर के इर्द गिर्द है तो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक एविडेंस को कैसे हमको खोजा जाए कैसे उसकी सेंटिटी मेंटेन किया जाए हैश वैल्यू कैसे मेंटेन किया जाए चेन ऑफ कस्टडी कैसे मेंटेन किया जाए ये सारा गाइडेंस जो है ये हमको 420 स्टैंडर्ड जो है एविडेंस गैदरिंग इन डिजिटल डोमेन देता है उसके बाद है चार लोन्स एंड बोरोइंग्स अब लोन्स एंड बोरोइंग्स क्योंकि लोन जो है ये बहुत बड़ा सब्जेक्ट मैटर है डिस्प्यूट का बैंक बैंक आपस में आपस में बैंकों में एनबीएफसीज में डिस्प्यूट होता है बोरोवर के पास अपेक्षा होता है प्राइवेट पार्टीज में ये सब प्रॉब्लम होता है इसे लोन्स एंड बोरोइंग्स पर एक अलग से स्टैंडर्ड बताया हुआ है कि मिस यूटिलाइजेशन किसको कहा जाएगा साइफरिंग किसको कहा जाएगा उसको किस तरह से देखना है कहाँ तक आपका दायरा है कि कितनी गहराई में जाना है आपको कितनी गहराई में आपको बताना है ये सारा चीज लोन्स एंड बोरोइंग्स में कोडिफाई किया है अगला पोर्शन है रिपोर्टिंग रिजल्ट ये ये हमारा 500 सीरीज का 510 स्टैंडर्ड नंबर है इसमें आप रिपोर्ट क्या देंगे रिपोर्ट कैसे देंगे ये बताया हुआ इसमें एक छोटा सा फॉर्मेट भी बताया हुआ है कि कौन से फॉर्मेट में आप दे सकते हैं क्योंकि क्या होता है ना हर केस बिल्कुल अलग होता है मेरे पास जो केस आते हैं वो ज्यादातर ऐसा होता है जब प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टिगेशन में तो साहब कोई भी केस ऐसा नहीं होता कि पुराने रिपोर्ट का फॉर्मेट नए में इस्तेमाल कर लो हर बार नया दिमाग लगाना पड़ता है हर बार नया बनाना पड़ता है पर ऐसा नहीं है कि सब कुछ नया होता है कुछ सिद्धांत होते हैं वो सिद्धांत हर केस में कॉमन होते हैं वो सिद्धांत कैसे मेंटेन हो क्या लिखें क्या डालें ये सारी चीजें उसमें बताया हुआ होता है कहा जाता है जैसे मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल के लिए बताऊं अब रिपोर्ट हो सकता है आपका दो पन्ने का हो ठीक है लेकिन सभी रिपोर्ट में दो पन्ने का तीन पन्ने के एक एग्जीक्यूटिव समरी डालना चाहिए जो एग्जीक्यूटिव के पन्ने के लिए हो जो आपके सारे केस को समराइज कर ले और जो पढ़ा जा सके तो इस टाइप की चीजें जो हैं, जो सभी केसेस में एप्लीकेबल हैं, वो 510 में बताया हुआ है ठीक है अगला पोर्शन अगर हम अगर अगला पोर्शन हम लेते हैं 
तो वो क्वालिटी कंट्रोल क्वालिटी कंट्रोल है क्योंकि ये स्टैंडर्ड सी इंस्टीट्यूट ने इशू किए हैं इसीलिए कॉन्स्टेंट कॉन्स्टेंट इंप्रूवमेंट इन क्वालिटी दे ऑलवेज थ्राइव टू इंप्रूव द क्वालिटी इस चीज को लास्ट वाला जो स्टैंडर्ड है 610 उसमें बताया हुआ है और ये सभी स्टैंडर्ड जो हैं ये एक चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट को अनिवार्य है अगर वो कोई भी इन्वेस्टिगेशन एक जुलाई 2023 के बाद से शुरू कर रहे हैं बात खत्म कर रहे हैं ऐसा नहीं है मुझे अपॉइंटमेंट अगर 2022 में मिला है मैं रिपोर्ट आज की तारीख में साइन कर रहा हूं तो ये स्टैंडर्ड एप्लीकेबल नहीं है लेकिन अगर आज मुझे अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर मिलता है और मैं परसों साइन करता हूं तो भी ये मेरे लिए अनिवार्य है और मुझे मेरे रिपोर्ट में दो लाइन डालना पड़ता है कि दिस रिपोर्ट कंप्लाइज टू ऑल दिस फॉरेंसिक इन्वेस्टिगेशन एफ स्टैंडर्ड्स आई बाय बाई इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया ये रिपोर्ट सभी स्टैंडर्ड्स जो इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट्स ऑफ इंडिया ने इशू किए हुए हैं उनको सेटिस्फाई करता है और उनको कंप्लाई करता है ऐसा मुझे एक स्टेटमेंट अपने रिपोर्ट में डालना पड़ेगा बेसिकली ये एक अटेम्प्ट है ये एक चांस है कि जब रिपोर्ट्स में एक तरह का यूनिफॉर्मिटी आ सके एक तरह का एश्योरेंस मिल सके सभी पार्टियों को करने वाले को एश्योरेंस हो कि हाँ मैंने मेरा काम यहां तक किया हुआ है तो भविष्य में मुझे परेशान नहीं किया जाएगा मुझसे ये प्रश्न अगर पूछा जाए कि भाई आपने यही क्यों देखा और ये क्यों नहीं देखा तो मेरे पास ये जवाब रहेगा कि साहब हमारे स्टैंडर्ड में बताया हुआ है कि आपको यहां तक देखना है तो मैंने यहां तक देखा इसके आगे मैंने नहीं देखा और जिसके लिए काम करते हैं उसको भी ये एश्योरेंस होगा कि भाई कम से कम इतना तो ये देखेंगे ही ये इनकी जिम्मेदारी में आता है इनके स्टैंडर्ड में ही लिखा हुआ है कि इतना तो इनको देखना पड़ेगा ये ये डिस्प्यूट को और ये मैचिंग ऑफ माइंड को ये स्टैंडर्ड ब्रिज करते हैं दैट इज ऑल फ्रॉम माय साइड थैंक यू सर विकास जी हाँ जी सर ये कुछ क्वेश्चंस हैं व्हाट आर द टूल्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर फॉरेंसिक ऑडिटिंग कैन यू डिस्कस अबाउट द टूल्स इफ यू हैव टेकन टैली बैकअप टूल्स मैंने आप सर म्यूट पे है मेरे ख्याल से आपका आवाज नहीं आ रहा है दैट्स व्हाई या टू क्वेश्चंस दिस इज द सीए ब्रिंद्रा टेक्स द क्वेश्चन फॉरवर्ड इफ यू हैव टेकन अ टैली बैकअप हाउ एंड व्हिच टूल इज टू बी यूज्ड टू एनालाइज द सेम सर ऐसा है फॉरेंसिक्स में हाइपोथेटिकल सिचुएशन नहीं चलता है एग्जैक्टली exactly कहां दर्द है वो बताना पड़ेगा तो उसके बाद फिर उसके लिए कुछ सुझाव दिया जा सकता है अब टैली का बैकअप लिया हुआ है उसमें तकलीफ क्या है एग्जैक्टली exactly क्या टैली में प्रॉब्लम है उसको रीराइट करना है अगर हाँ एक चीज में बोल सकता अगर वो टैली वॉल्ट में है और पासवर्ड नहीं है तो उसको नहीं खोजा जा सकता है वो टैली खुद मना करती है कि नहीं को जा, सक, जा सकते हमने एक बार एनफोर्समेंट डायरेक्टरेट के लिए डेटा रिकवर किया था तो हमने टैली को चिट्ठी लिखा था कि इसका वॉल्ट को आप खोल दीजिएगा तो टैली ने कहा कि भाई हमारे पास भी उसका डिक्रिप्शन हम नहीं करते हैं हमारे पास वो डिस्क्रिप्शन नहीं है और फिर उसके बाद वो हमको कोर्ट में परसू करना पड़ता तो हम उस लेवल पर गए नहीं अब एग्जैक्टली टैली में क्या प्रॉब्लम है टैली में पासवर्ड डाला हुआ है तो पासवर्ड वाला तो फिर भी क्रैक हो सकता है लेकिन अगर टैली वॉल्ट में है तो टैली वॉल्ट का डेटा नहीं मिल सकता है एनालिसिस अगर बोल रहे हैं तो किस तरह का एनालिसिस है क्या एनालिसिस है वो पता कैसे चलेगा बैंक का स्टेटमेंट है ये है वो है मुझे पता नहीं है मेरा मेरा आप नंबर ले सकते हैं आप मुझे संपर्क में हो सकते हैं शायद व्यक्तिगत आप थोड़ा सा और इंफॉर्मेशन दें तो मैं आपकी मदद कर सकता हूं स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑडिटर कैन बी कॉल्ड एज एन एक्सपर्ट इन केस ऑफ अ क्रिमिनल केस अब सर आई रियली डोंट नो वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑडिटर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट एनीबडी कैन बी कॉल्ड एज एन एक्सपर्ट टिल द टाइम ही इस्टेब्लिशेज हिज क्रेडेंशियल एज एन एक्सपर्ट अगर कोई व्यक्ति अपने क्रेडेंशियल को एज एन एक्सपर्ट इस्टेब्लिश कर देते हैं इन कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ में तो वो एक्सपर्ट के तौर पर बुलाए जा सकते हैं स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑडिटर की परिभाषा में कौन आते हैं किस टाइप के केस में क्रिमिनल केस में बोल रहे हैं तो क्रिमिनल केस के कौन से फैसेट के लिए एक्सपर्ट को बुला रहे हैं अगर वो जो गवर्नमेंट ऑडिटर हैं वो वित्तीय क्षेत्र में स्पेशलाइज करते हैं स्पेशलाइज इन फील्ड ऑफ फाइनेंस प्रोबेबली ही कैन बी कॉल्ड एंड मैटर इज रिलेटेड टू फाइनेंस ही कैन बी कॉल्ड एज एन एक्सपर्ट अदर देन दैट आई रियली डोंट नो वॉट टू आंसर
हाँ जी सर मनोज जी को देखते हैं कि नहीं तब तक आ... मैं अपना फोन नंबर चैट बॉक्स में डाल दिया हूँ हाँ स्लाइड पर मैंने स्लाइड पर मैंने लिखा नहीं था एक्चुअली वो स्टैंडर्ड स्लाइड है जो सी इंस्टीट्यूट से आया हुआ है जो हम सब जगह पे यूज करते हैं इसीलिए वो स्लाइड्स ना हमने बनाई है ना हम उसका ऑनरशिप क्लेम करते हैं इसीलिए उसमें अपने उसमें अपना हम कोई डेटा नहीं डालते हैं मेरा फोन नंबर मैंने जरूर लिख दिया है नाइन एट टू फोर आई रिप्लाई टू मोस्ट ऑफ माई क्वेरीज एंड माई माई मेल आई डी इज दुर्गेश एट डी के एम एस डॉट को डॉट इन यू कैन बी इन टच विथ मी कुछ भी हो तो आप मुझे मैसेज कर सकते हैं फोन कर सकते हैं व्हाट्सएप कर सकते हैं आई ट्राई टू रिप्लाई टू मोस्ट ऑफ माई क्वेरीज most of my communications haan ji sir thank you durgesh ji uh, before we part for the day i will ask mr manoj anand who is the connecting point to share his thoughts ya yeah, manoj ji sir mute hai shayad aap awaaz nahi aa raha hai manoj ji ab mute hain meanwhile so we will take the uh, so tomorrow we will be having a session on pleadings and its relevance in criminal proceedings by am uh, karunanithi an advocate a member of the law commission of india special public prosecutor cbi cases in high court and senior panel counsel you know sir over to you mr manoj kindly unmute yourself manoj kumar anand kya manoj ji सुनाई नहीं दे रहा दुर्गेश जी अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर लें वी पार्ट फॉर द डे टुडे हाँ जी सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर हैविंग मी एंड प्रोबेबली देर सम सम प्रॉब्लम विथ एट मनोज जी एंड वी आर नॉट एबल टू हियर हिम एनी वेज आ जा रहे हैं हाँ जी सर हुआ आवाज आना ओके okay, ओके okay. और लगता है वो एयरफोन में कुछ गड़बड़ थी और आवाज थिंकिंग की विकास जी मेरे को अनम्यूट नहीं कर रहे उंट <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, in fact i was really delighted to learn that you been you are handling a case where amount of 9000 crore in 20 states are involved that volume speaks of uh, the kind of opportunity which this particular forcing can give to us and uh, you know i also have a little bit of experience dealing with the cbi i was giving them lecture on some uh, you know uh, this uh, some financial accounting and how to uh, you know detect uh, uh, the the frauds in or uh, the possible frauds in the balance sheet and something like that ye inka gaziabad mein ek center hai wahan pe ja ke main inko lecture deta tha central detective training institute main kai baar detective training institute i used to go there uh, but uh, you know the, 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 that that in itself has a very big privilege and you been dealing with not only cbi but ed soi sfoi or stock exchanges that 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 really add feather to your cap when you are dealing with igs and so uh, big people and th- that is really fascinating uh, with these notes durgesh ji uh, you know people might have thought that uh, this uh, is a new topic and may not be much uh, interesting to them but uh, we, everybody was tuned to it and found it highly interested and uh, we are really thankful to you and we should use your services in the days to come also mai last mein ek baat aur kahunga अब हम 18 तारीख को एक आईपा में हम लोग वेबिनार कर रहे हैं क्योंकि अभी जो है वेरी रिसेंटली अमेंडमेंट्स आई हैं इनफेक्ट सॉरी 18 को नहीं कर रहे मैं गलत बोल गया वो अमेंडमेंट्स 18 तारीख को आई हैं और हम लोग कमिंग वेडनेसडे को हम कर रहे हैं ट्वेंटी को ट्वेंटी सेवन को हम कर रहे हैं एक वेबिनार वेयर बाय मी एंड अलॉन्ग विद माय वाइस प्रेसिडेंट एंड द ममता जी विल बी डीलिंग विद दोज अमेंडमेंट दोज आर इन आईबीसी आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट एट ऑडियंस वो इंटरेस्टेड इन आईबीसी डू ज्वाइन देम एंड विकास जी तो ज्वाइन करेंगे ही करेंगे सीएलसी का हम अपना पार्ट बनाएंगे ही बनाएंगे वो इस पर दर नो डाउट इन डैट वे विद दिस नोट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक्स टू ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू मनोज जी और थैंक यू दुर्गेश जी ये जब लास्ट पार्टिंग शॉट में जब वो मनोज जी ने बोला कि भाई शायद विकास जी उन्हें बोलने नहीं दे रहे तो वो एक इसके ऊपर स्टोरी थी कि कई बार अपने आप को सेल्फ इंट्रोस्पेक्ट कर लेते होते हैं 
कहते हैं नए नए हस्बैंड वाइफ होते हैं वो बैठे होते हैं और ये कहते हैं वो हमेशा पड़ोसी नए आए होते हैं वाइफ कहती है देखो कैसे पड़ोसी आए हैं हमेशा इनका शीशा भी गंदा है कपड़े भी गंदे हैं कितने महले कपड़े हैं हस्बैंड रोज सुनता रहता है रोज सुनता रहता है एक दिन वो कहती है आज उन्होंने भी हमारे जैसे सीख लिया कि कपड़े बड़े बिल्कुल साफ है हस्बैंड कहता है कपड़े उनके तो हमेशा ही साफ थे हमारे शीशे पे धूल लगी हुई थी आज मैंने उसे साफ कर तो कहते वो कपनी कभी कभार अपने आप को भी देख लेना चाहिए नो बेनिफिट मनोज जी बट दैट वाज अ पार्टिंग शॉट वो नो नो आई आई अप्रिशिएट योर पॉइंट टेक्नोलॉजी जो होती है ना ये हमेशा लगता है कि कभी तो बिल्कुल ठीक चल रही है कभी आपको इतना डिस्टर्ब कर देते हैं कि यू फील कि ये क्या हो गया यू बिकम हैंडीकैप इन एनी केस आई जस्ट टेल द ऑडियंस टेक्नोलॉजी का यही फायदा ना देखो तो ये जो गुजरात में आप दिल्ली में मैं चंडीगढ़ में हम तीनों कनेक्टेड और जो लोग हैं कहां-कहां से जुड़े हुए हैं थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर